For USCFootball.com, I'm Keely Orr here with Dan Weber. Instant analysis of USC's second practice of spring camp. It was a defensive day today, and we got to talk to all the defensive players for the first time. What did you get to see today? Well, I think, uh, I think the question I had for him is, how do you take what you guys did? Uh, you know, they were one of the best pass uh, rush teams in the country. They were third in the red zone or fourth, something like that, and 68th in total defense. How do you get those two closer together? And they all talk about attention to detail. You know, you can't take plays off. You got to trust one another. And as Clay said, you know, you're trying to stop the run. You got nine guys that do it perfectly, two guys who don't, and they gas you for 15 yards. I think that's been the, the big emphasis here is everybody does it right on every play. Everybody's in the, you know, in the play. Uh, having most everybody who played last year really helps, even though they lost some, you know, serious talent in Uchenna, Chris Hawkins and uh, and Rasheem Green, they still got most everybody that's going to be on the field played a lot. Mm -hmm. That seemed to be a theme that we heard today, both from defensive players and from Clay Helton, that having consistency, having consistency in your coordinators, especially for Clancy and his defense, it helps having guys uh, who have three years under their belt in Clancy's system. You can really see it when Clancy talks about the players. He knows exactly when they came on board, how many games they played last year, how much that helps them to know what they're doing this year. And I think a good thing is for the coordinators to have confidence in the players. Yeah. I mean, I think that uh, enables them. For example, it will enable Clancy to play more guys this year. Last year he said we had 22, 23 dressed who we thought could play. Usually 16 or 17 did. He said we'll have more than that this year. But, uh, but it's a real theme. You're right. That's, uh, that's what they're talking about and thinking about. Mm -hmm. And Clancy noted each player who started for the first time, you know how uh, Cam Smith moved over to Mike. John Houston played for the first time at Will. He, kno he knows all those players, and he said this is, they're now comfortable, and this is, they're, they're not starting from scratch in spring. That's a big part of the way Clancy looks at things. Yeah. You need to be able to prove to Clancy that you know exactly what you're doing. And that's one of the challenges of getting some of this young talent on the field. You know, there's a lot of young talent here, but they haven't played a lot, you know, for Clancy. So that will be the big, uh, the big challenge because I know Clay addressed that uh, Tuesday when he said, I've talked to my, you know, coaches and we have an advantage in numbers. We need and we want them to be fresh now. Today, Clancy said, I think we're still fresh at the end. So you know they're hearing what one another are saying. Mm -hmm. It was the second day of no pads, but it was still a, a fast-paced physical practice, as physical as you could go without pads. Um, Jane Harris had an interception, or no, Marvel Tell had an interception. Oh, Jane also Jane had an interception. Yeah. Marvel also ha almost had two. He got more work in than we saw on Tuesday, um, but we did see the quarterbacks flip-flop. Matt Fink got first-team reps on Tuesday. This time, uh, Jack Sears got first-team reps. Right. Uh, I thought uh, uh, Marvell said uh, he's perfect. So I, he, I don't, I think they were just being, you know, careful Tuesday, but he looked awfully good. Yeah. Uh, and he just really looks like he knows what he's doing. Uh, uh, last year, he played a lot down in the box and was kind of an extra linebacker. This year, we're seeing him play deep, deep center field. Uh, and I said, do you have a preference? He said, no. Nah whichever whatever they ask me to do I'll, I'll be doing and I'll, I'll be I'll be fine with it but uh, he looks awfully good mm -hmm. and so does Biggie yeah Biggie I think Clay went out of his way to make sure people real you know are aware of how how well Biggie is playing at corner mm -hmm. I thought Jack Sears looked more comfortable with the first team receivers today um, even Helton noticed that he was quicker to pull the trigger today so I think that helped him going with those guys yeah no question about it I think uh, uh, at first I put you know, he, he maybe the very first couple of plays he didn't maybe look as comfortable, but as soon as he realized, you know, I've got guy, I, you know, I'm throwing to Tyler Bonds on one side and I'm throwing to Michael Pittman on the other side, and he he loosened up, you know, really well. I thought I thought he had a good day. And I thought Matt Fink had a really really good day. So, uh, and I think Clay said he loves the fact that they um, they don't look timid, they look confident, and they look uh, under control. And uh, I've been uh, uh, very pleased. I've been pleased with the quarterbacks. I think they've shown up ready to go. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of a schedule change. Um, the forecast for LA this weekend is going to be rainy, so they actually moved Saturday's scrimmage-like practice to tomorrow, Friday, at 2:15. So if you're planning on on coming out to practice, make sure you mark that in your calendar. But it's going to be the first time that USC goes full pad, so that will be kind of interesting to see how physical they go tomorrow. Yeah, and I'm not sure totally what the rules are because at first Clay said shells, then he said 
pads. Mm. So I think we need to probably get that cleared up because I don't think you go from no pads to full pads. Yeah. I think yeah, no. there's an intermediate and I think when he said he meant they'll all be in pads, but I don't think they're okay. I don't think they'll be in full pads. I don't think now who knows? They change the rules year to year as to what you can do this practice and that practice and all that. But I'm not sure that you go to full pads uh, uh, on the third practice. That seems like a little bit of a jump. But uh, any expectations tomorrow? What are you going to be looking for? I think more of the same. Just uh, you know, the, the fact that they can. I mean, I, I like the fact that Clay said one of the benefits of having your coordinators, special teams, offense, and defense for a third year is how easy the transition is from year to year to year. I think one of the things that we're seeing is it's not a case of oh, where did, uh, where did Sam go, or where did Rasheem go, or where did Chris Hawkins go? It's just a matter of moving forward and uh, having the ability to move forward. It doesn't look like they're taking any backward steps or stutter steps or that they're being less demanding or trying to, well, let's take our time and get into this. So uh, you don't have any sense that this is a team that's uh, missing people or a team that's not ready to go forward, even with two brand new quarterbacks, which is kind of uh, that's perfect, kind of unusual. Mm -hmm. I can't remember if I mentioned this, but Dominique Davis returned to practice um, today in a red jersey, so he was on offense um, at tailback. Um, I also talked to Greg Johnson today, a two-way player in high school. He said there has been some talk of moving him to the offense, but he kind of gave a, a, a sly smile, wouldn't give anything away. So far right now, he's still on defense. So that, that running back position, as far as spring goes, is kind of fluid right now. Yeah, the other day I thought they had they lined up Vilas Jones there for uh, for a little bit. Yeah. I thought uh, Dominic Davis had a really good day. He mm -hmm. did a couple of, I mean, two or four really good runs, a couple of you know catches out of the backfield, one unbelievably good move against uh, uh, freshman Chase Williams yeah. in the open field. So uh, so I think we're probably going to see more movement. And and even when they had Vilas in there as a uh, as a flanker or whatever, they, uh, they're they figuring out ways to get him the ball, to run the ball. And I uh, thought they did, uh, you know, uh, sometimes on the jet sweep it's, it's obvious, but then there were a couple of times I thought they handled it really, uh, really nicely in the way they they, uh, they ran it with the offense. So uh, so I think, uh, and Vilas looks like he's a more mature runner, uh, more able to cut through uh, uh, contact and just more positive about where the seam is and where he's going to be able to get the ball upfield. Mm -hmm. Any final th thoughts from today's practice? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I just think I, I think it's going to be interesting to see whether this team believes that they can do, for example, what the 2003 team did when they had a new quarterback that nobody knew anything about, Matt Liner, and they went into Auburn, and Auburn had all these NFL players, and they were really, really, you know, some people picking and winning the national championship, and USC goes in there and shuts Auburn out 23 to nothing. And they gave, you know, the offense a chance to get better. And by the end of the year, they win the national championship, but they, they did it to start out with on defense. And, and it will be interesting to see with a schedule that's front-loaded, you're going to Stanford week two, you're going to Texas week three. Is this defense to the point where you can be that kind of a shutdown team where you just don't let the other team win? I mean, they have two different ways of saying it. One of them is, I think Marvell said, we believe if we score, we win. And Clancy says, if they don't score, we win. But they're both kind of turning on defense if uh, and so yeah so if they don't score we win <laughs> all right that's going to wrap it up for thursday practice practice number two from spring camp for dan weber i'm keely or for more check out uscfootball.com